Let's start with Tibor. So, so about 10 minutes. Thanks. I'll try my best. So it's a privilege to be invited to talk to you, and I hope I won't bore you to death. Um, as a CFO, which I'm also, beside of being CTO of Science Open, uh, normally the things that I look at have less funny sides to it and more kind of um, structured and... and um, serious uh, types, but I have, uh, it's really a pleasure being here and talking about uh, publishing paradigm in the uh, scientific world as my career started really in 1981, um, working for a scientific printer at that time, um, which was managed by the largest uh, owner of Springer Verlag. Um, and he was my tutor the first 10 years of my life, and I was involved in um, a working group with Elsevier and Kluver and Springer and a couple of other companies, um, which created the first DTD for exchange of metadata for scientific works um, in 1992. Uh, that was actually used by all these publishing houses till just recently, when it sort of evolved into an XML DTD and then became uh, the de facto standard for metadata in STM. In the meantime, I did a lot in software and came back actually now to, um, to this field. The, uh, what I wanted to point out this time is probably not so much what my company is doing or what you try to do as Science Open, so this is the only slide that goes in that direction, um, which is uh, to provide a platform for uh, networking and organizing publishing processes um, um, for, for members of the platform, uh, providing access to scientific information, uh, publications, articles. We will start with around 600,000, mainly from uh, PubMed Central and Archive, and add other data sources over time, and provide a publishing service to our um, um, members. But the, in 2000, 2013, 2014, to start a publishing organization in the STM field uh, requires some thinking why you would do that. And I just try to sort of tell a little bit about what made us uh, do that and what, what are drivers in our concept uh, that we are implementing. We think that um, the scholarly publishing paradigm, which has worked well for 200 years and did not really change in those 200 years, um, is about to break and to be changed dramatically. We are seeing that process, I think, since at least 10 years. The debate for open access is at least 10 years old. And um, whoever recalls that debate knows how complex and, and interesting it is. Um, but we also know that one of the ingredients in this debate is the changed infrastructure um, that was um, basically provided by the Internet and the acceptance of the Internet, which recalls in me this one, uh, the memory of one um, event where the STM industry <coughs> was having a conference back in Europe and somebody from CERN came up and, and uh, started to talk about the World Wide Web as a platform for exchange of scientific data and how all, everybody in the room, uh, all Elsevier's and Springer's and whatever the names are, um, were sort of laughing and thinking, what is this? I think we have arrived at a state where nobody is laughing anymore about the <coughs> fact that it is changing something. So the question is, what is changed and what will be changed? <coughs> Not so much what you want, but what is the adequate reaction to an infrastructure change that is so dominant and, and will be so predominant in what we are doing? And I think just to sum it up, so in case my 10 minutes run out, uh, the summary of my presentation is I think the, 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 uh, the publishing paradigm is breaking, A, because journals will disintegrate. The concept of journals is going away. Um, I think that publishing is moving from publishing products like journals to being a service to somebody uh, that wants to publish. And that in includes the whole scale from self-service to a service that you pay for, dependent on uh, the outcome of what you are getting. 
And the third and most culturally interesting change that we are foreseeing and we, I believe in is that the, what I call the walled peer review behind the walls of a publisher that is very sort of secretive and well-defined is breaking and is transcending into a public post-publication peer review. And so if you want to know what I'm saying, this is it. This is my message. <laughs> let's, go into, let's go into the details uh, as long as I have more time. So the first thing is journals disintegrate. Historically, a journal is nothing else than a container that somebody used to collect certain works um, and, and put them together because just the distribution already was an issue. So you needed to distribute it to different spaces. It took time and all of that. The production was hard. You needed to print it and all that. So it made sense to provide something like a container where you would put those parts, the articles in, package them up, and then in certain intervals, produce them and send them to the users. This changed long time ago. It became, well, if you, in my, in my timing, so in my life it changed totally, the last 30 years, uh, because all these uh, printing wasn't that necessary anymore. If, you know, you could print, but everybody could print. So it wasn't that issue anymore. So it transcended into something where I would say the important thing is today a journal is a publisher product. And the price of a product, like with every product as opposed to service, is not derived from the cost that goes into producing that product, but is derived from the, from the brand value that is associated with that product. And in this case, it's the impact factor, just to take one of the major is issues that, that goes into that. Now, I personally think that this time is over. Even, and I'm not saying it was bad to have those, I'm just saying they won't stay for too long. So maybe 10 years, I don't know. But they are not here to stay. Why? Because there's no need anymore for such a container. You can, there's no need for a collection. You can immediately publish the article, not a collection, not 10 articles, one article, that one you are focusing on. There's no need for an issue so to, to sort of link them together or bind them together in something physical because you can link to them, you can, you can, you can connect them uh, through content and through usage as opposed to uh, through a production process. And there is no need for a distribution in the common sense where you needed that package to, to move somewhere because everybody can access that nowadays. And if there is no, just no need for any of that, well, then the likelihood is it will go away. And in that sense, I would like to, um, to state my full agreement to Stephen Curry, uh, who, uh, who stated open access is an inevitable consequence of the Internet. It's not something that is here to, for us to choose. It's something that is happening. The question is how fast and how will it be cultured in a way that is useful for us. The second is, and comes with it, publishing becomes a service. So I just recall what I just said. Today, a journal is a publisher product. Well, if an article can go for, it, for its own and can be accepted as such, um, and then impact factors become meaningless. It is really, what is an impact factor of a journal if I have access to a specific article and I can value that article? And we are seeing that public debate nowadays. We are seeing that article metrics are a very hot issue in the whole debate. They are coming up. They are more and more used and asked for. And from my perspective, they will enhance the impact factors, and then they will replace the impact factors. There will be a lot to find out how to do that right and how to, how to, how to do it in a way that it is um, um, providing the right value to the right, uh, right pieces. But that's methods. That's not what is happening. That's how it will happen. And by, by dissolving the impact factors, that has a consequence. That has the consequence that it dissolves the journal as a product. And if the journal is dissolved as a product, then it transforms publishing into a service. And one effect of something that becomes a service is its price is measured by the perceived value of the, of the, uh, and, the, and the costs that go into producing it. So therefore, we will see a tremendous change in the pricing of these things. And we are seeing it already, if you, if you look at the, at the open access market, uh, from prices around $5,000 down to for free. Um, and I think um, 
that is uh, that is already a, a pointer to that, um, and it is destroying a basis of something that a, a financial investor called obscene profit margins in STM publishing. The culturally most important thing that we are seeing is that the Walt peer review is transcending into public post-publication peer review. What, what I mean by that is if you look at historically what a peer review is, it's of course all of us, or I assume all of us agree that peer review, uh, however it was made and is made, is a measure to try to ensure that quality is attached to, a, uh, to our product, to our, uh, to our article. But the way it's done historically, it delays publication, sometimes by a lot of time. Um, nowadays, you could imagine you can publish instantly. Uh, what's actually happening in parts of the industry, and that's just an example, if you look at archive, archive is something that is really just a, a preprint. It's called preprint, but what it is, it is made available so it is published, you can have access to it, you can relate to it. And if it's published early, then it is inviting a debate already at that time when it's published and not later on when it may be accepted through whatever peer review it's, it's going through. The second thing is the peer review at, at, as it is run today is co closed. So there are very few gatekeepers um, that work hard to look at something and, and whatever, but you don't know exactly who was that, how, ma how many, what did they really think about that article, how did it, what processes went on till the article became really published. And I think rather today it will look, or tomorrow it will look like, um, well, go, th go out there, publish your document, present it to the peers, enable a broad and transparent peer review, uh, create improved releases. So why not having more versions over time with all that input that you can collate around that, uh, that work that you've done um, and really improve the, the outcome of your, of your publishing? So the article itself becomes a, a base for the discourse, for the scientific discourse. And here comes a qualitative aspect that I think can be added with this model. And that is that the formally binary decision, this article is good enough to be published or is not good enough to be published, is now transported into something where the aspects of a publication can be valued. So I can look at something and say, well, the method actually is really great, but, the, uh, but here and here that doesn't work. So people can already start to learn about that thing, can utilize that, can apply that to their areas, can f give feedback on that and improve the whole process. So the conclusion and this is what made us form the company Science Open and, and, and get involved in scientific publishing nowadays is that publishing is becoming a service. So really competition will, will come up and it will be about the quality of the service, not so much about am I a standing STM company for 200 years and how good I, 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 am I so nobody can really compete against me. So the, the, there is a, a real opportunity here. Actually, the publication fees will be based on cost, not the product, I said that already, if you have fees at all, depending on the value that you perceive in that process. Articles will beca are becoming accessible around the globe, important here, around the globe. So there is some sort of cultural change also that access to scientific information is really global and is becoming global as opposed to having very kind of toll gates around, around it. And the third thing is, the public discourse that is opened with, with the peer discussions is becoming a part of the vetting process. So it is something that improves the scientific work that you are doing. And by pinpointing strengths and weaknesses, <coughs> by um, stressing specific aspects that the, that the work shows, and by constituting learning experiences for readers. Um, I guess I've overspent my 10 minutes, so um, I thank you very much.